The exact origin of syphilis is a subject of debate among historians and scientists. The first well-documented outbreak of syphilis occurred in Europe in 1495 among French troops besieging Naples, Italy. This led to the widespread recognition of the disease in Europe. However, it is unclear whether syphilis was a previously existing disease in Europe that suddenly became more virulent, or if it was brought to Europe from the Americas by Christopher Columbus and his crew, as some theories suggest. The latter hypothesis, known as the Columbian theory, posits that syphilis was a new world disease brought back by Columbus's crew in the late 15th century. However, there is evidence supporting both the Columbian and pre-Columbian theories, making the exact origin and discovery of syphilis a complex and unresolved historical question. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection primarily spread through sexual contact and caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. The most common way this disease is transmitted is through direct contact with a syphilis sore, known as a chancre, during vaginal, anal, or oral sex. These sores typically appear on the external genitals, vagina, anus, or in the rectum, but they can also develop on the lips and in the mouth. The bacteria enter the body through minor cuts or abrasions in the skin or mucous membranes. Another significant route of transmission is from mother to child during pregnancy or childbirth, known as congenital syphilis. Pregnant women with syphilis can pass the infection to their unborn child, leading to severe outcomes like miscarriage, stillbirth, or serious health issues in the newborn, including deformities and neurological problems. While much less common, especially in countries where blood donations are rigorously screened, syphilis can also be transmitted through blood transfusion with infected blood. Non-sexual transmission, though rare, is possible as well. This can occur through direct contact with an active syphilis lesion, such as kissing someone who has a syphilis sore on their lips. It's important to understand that syphilis is not spread through casual contact. This means it cannot be contracted by touching objects or surfaces like toilet seats, doorknobs, swimming pools, hot tubs, bathtubs, shared clothing, or eating utensils. Syphilis has several stages, primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary, each with distinct symptoms. The early stages of the disease are particularly infectious. While the use of condoms can significantly reduce the risk of transmitting or contracting syphilis, it may not offer complete protection since sores can occur in areas not covered by a condom. Regular screening for sexually transmitted infections and prompt treatment are essential for sexually active individuals. This approach is crucial not only for individual health but also for preventing the spread of syphilis and other sexually transmitted infections within the community. Syphilis, caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum, is a sexually transmitted infection that presents a range of symptoms across its different stages. The infection progresses through primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary stages if left untreated, with each stage having distinct symptoms. In the primary stage, the most noticeable symptom is a small, painless sore known as a chancre. This sore typically appears at the site where the bacteria entered the body, such as around the genitals, anus, or mouth. It usually develops about three weeks to three months after exposure. The chancre is often unnoticed because it's painless and may be hidden inside the body. Despite healing on its own within three to six weeks, the infection remains and progresses if not treated. The secondary stage is characterized by a rash that begins on the trunk and eventually spreads over the entire body, including the palms of the hands and soles of the feet. Additional symptoms during this stage may include fever, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, patchy hair loss, headaches, weight loss, muscle aches, and fatigue. Like the primary stage, these symptoms will eventually subside, but without treatment, the infection advances to the latent stage. During the latent stage, syphilis becomes less symptomatic. This stage can last for years and is divided into early and late phases. The early latent phase generally occurs within the first year after infection, while the late latent phase can extend for several years or even decades. Tertiary syphilis, the most severe stage, can develop in untreated individuals years or decades after the initial infection. This stage can cause extensive damage to various organ systems, including the heart, blood vessels, brain, nervous system, leading to neurosyphilis, eyes, bones, and skin. 
Symptoms at this stage can be severe and include mental illness, neurological problems, heart disease, blindness, and other serious complications. Additionally, Congenital syphilis occurs when the infection is transmitted from a pregnant woman to her fetus. This can lead to miscarriage, stillbirth, or a variety of severe health problems in the infant, including deformities and neurological issues. The symptoms of syphilis can be mild and easy to overlook, making regular screening and early treatment essential. While syphilis can be effectively cured with appropriate antibiotics in its early stages, Treatment in later stages might not reverse the damage already caused. Treating syphilis effectively involves the use of antibiotics, as the disease is caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. The specific approach to treatment depends on the stage of the infection. In the early stages, which include primary, secondary, and early latent syphilis, the standard treatment is an intramuscular injection of penicillin, a highly effective antibiotic against this bacterium. Often, a single dose of penicillin is sufficient to treat the infection if it's caught in the primary or secondary stage. For those who are allergic to penicillin, alternative antibiotics like doxycycline or azithromycin may be used, though they are generally considered less effective. For late latent syphilis or tertiary syphilis, the treatment typically requires a more extended course of penicillin injections. This might involve multiple doses given at weekly intervals. The goal at these later stages is to prevent further damage, as treatment may not reverse damage already done. Patients with neurosyphilis, where the infection has affected the central nervous system, require a more intensive treatment approach. This usually involves intravenous penicillin administered daily, often in a hospital setting, for a duration of 10 to 14 days. In cases of congenital syphilis, where infants are born with the infection, antibiotic treatment is also necessary. The specific regimen for infants depends on their clinical findings and test results. Following the treatment, it's crucial to have follow-up blood tests to ensure that the infection is completely resolved. This follow-up is particularly important in the later stages of syphilis. Additionally, sexual partners should be notified, tested, and treated if necessary to prevent the spread of the disease. During pregnancy, it's vital to treat syphilis with penicillin to cure the infection in the mother and prevent transmission to the fetus. Alternative antibiotics are not recommended due to the risk of congenital syphilis in the baby. While antibiotic treatment can cure syphilis and prevent further damage, it's important to remember that it may not repair damage that has already occurred, especially in the later stages of the disease. Moreover, treatment for syphilis does not confer immunity meaning individuals can be reinfected after successful treatment. Therefore, practicing safe sex and undergoing regular STI screenings remain crucial for preventing syphilis and other sexually transmitted infections.